Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. Today is a very special episode, and we get the chance to chat with founder of Tiny Chart, Mr. Greg. I'll have a such nice chat, and maybe for some of you guys might not be super familiar with what is Tiny Chart. And if you go down tinychart.org, all the way to the bottom and click About, you see, hello. Tinychart.org is an all-in-one trading platform for the Algorand blockchain. It is owned and actively developed by Tinychart Code Ltd. We provide a variety of features to make your trading easy, safe, and fun. And the roadmap they started in October 2021. That's when they had the alpha release, and then Tinychart token was created the next day. With total supply of 10 million tokens minted, and on the 28th, the first version was released. And then, fast moving forward, today at the beginning of 2022, they have much exciting things going on. Just in January alone, they have Algorand Wallet integration, they have inside trading, they have multi-chart view, they have tiny safe test nets release and code audit. And February 2022, which is next month, they have on and off ramp integration, tiny safe mainnet launch, tiny safe inside integration, and much, much more. And some of you guys might familiar with that on this channel. I have done something to review and chat with someone from Algorand before. And again, my opinion, I do my best not to be biased. And at the same time, Algorand is such. Amazing technology with amazing ecosystem. Algran ecosystem with more than 500 global organizations leveraging its technology. Algran is enabling the simple creation of next generation financial products, protocols, and exchange of value across DeFi financial institution and governments. To be honest, both me and Greg believe that 2022 this year is going to be such amazing year and exciting year for the whole ecosystem. For Algorand and of course for the whole crypto industry as well. So let's dive right into it. And before you keep going, make sure you hit the subscribe button, comments, and share this with someone who might want to get into the crypto. Because come on, guys, now it's already 2022. I can confirm this.、Um, everyone that we've spoken so far was super nice, very encouraging to us to 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 keep building, and、uh, it's I think it's one of the best uh, like. Um, Ecosystems to build them. It's it's very helpful. You don't even need to、um, have like、uh, upfront、um, funds to use for for your for your application. You can just start building, and you you will get help along the way. If if you help yourself, others others will help you too. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. That's super exciting. And I saw now. Uh, tweet the other day, someone I follow in the Algorand ecosystem. He said that. Maybe for the crypto newbies, maybe they should not、uh, get on, you know, link with MetaMask and you try to use Ethereum with high gas fees and get super confused. Versus they should get on Algorand first because everything is super fast and and low gas fee and super super easy to use.、Yeah. And I was like, huh, that's such an interesting idea, right? Because、um, Although a lot of people been in the industry for a long time, but maybe for、uh, although something is very very a project a project or ecosystem very very big, very very known, but that That maybe does not necessarily mean that it is super friendly for the newbies out there. So,、yeah. oh, absolutely. I think、um, Algorand has、um, a huge chance to be one of the friendliest chains,、uh, simply because it's very hard to explain to people that、uh, on Ethereum, for example, you have to wait five minutes for your transaction to go through, and it's not in your wallet, and it's not in the recipient's wallet, and you don't really know where it could be. So, so. Um, it's very stressful at, at the beginning for for anyone to send their funds and then have to wait five minutes and check like every minute if if the address is correct if you haven't made any mistakes and、um, Algorand fixes that and you can pretty much immediately see、uh, if your transaction went through or did not. Yes, absolutely, absolutely amazing. So let's jump right into it, ladies and gentlemen. We're so happy and thrilled to have Mr. Greg be on the podcast. Like he's absolutely amazing. He's the founder of the Tiny Chart Co. And 
Really quick, could you teach me how to pronounce your last name? <laughs> Uh, okay, so both of my names are very Polish, so don't worry if you cannot pronounce it. M most people cannot. Uh, but how you say it is Grzegorz Raczek. Let's dive right into it. I'm so excited to see and pick his brain and to see what they have in mind to accomplish this year. So first thing first, what is something about DeFi that you believe in, but others might disagree with you on? This is very also specific to Algorand. Uh, but I do believe that, especially on Algorand, uh, DeFi has a chance to be uh, the traditional forms of buying and selling cryptocurrency. Um, because exchanges have a lot of overhead. They have to, you have to give all of your data. Uh, you have to have, you have to create an account. Um, your wallet is not really your wallet because it belongs to the exchange. Uh, so, I, one of my, I think, um, opinions that people might not agree on is that DeFi has a huge, huge, huge chance to actually beat this system. And especially on Algorand, where you don't have to wait for transactions, um, it's, it's as instant as buying or selling it on, on, an, on a centralized exchange. And the result is much better because uh, what you're getting from, from, from the DeFi is instantly in your wallet and nobody else has access to it. Yes, I think that's absolutely wonderful. And I, the end of last week, I had to chat with one of my friends who he used to work with uh, the centralized exchange for a few years. And he said that essentially when it comes to all the exchange exchanges, is they are actually fundamentally exactly the same with the bank in this way that you can log in and maybe you have 1,000 Bitcoin or you know 10,000 algo or whatever <clears throat> excuse me on the exchange platform you're looking at but in your account maybe they could only have one or they could do whatever they want with it right so yeah um, absolutely yes uh, so your your exchange wallet is very combined with every other wallet that exists on this exchange so what you're actually seeing is just a smoke screen of what you actually have. So as, as long as it's not in your private wallet, you, you cannot be 100% sure that you own anything. If, if you, even if you have, have millions in Bitcoin in your exchange wallet, and if it's not in your private wallet that you have only the access to, um, it's not really yours. You know, it's a, it's a popular saying, uh, not your keys, not your coins. Uh, and I 100% and I be believe in that. And I think it's one of the fundamental truths of, of DeFi is uh, you should have your own wallet and you should um, guard those keys as best as you can. Yes, absolutely. So I began to get an idea about your philosophy and how you view the whole crypto and blockchain space, right? So would you, let's just take a step back. How did you get into blockchain and crypto space in the first place? Okay, so um, I think it was the, the perfect combination between my skills as a developer and my interest in the financial world uh, because I wanted to learn more about investing and uh, crypto is um, the perfect combination be between programming and traditional investing. So uh, while in, in traditional investing world, every, everyone... A, a big in there is just an investor, like uh, like founders, um, professional market makers, uh, stuff like that. Here, the the most amount of power have the actual developers because they know the most about the projects and they can immediately spot which projects are doing well, which projects are just you know a lot of fake news, a lot of hype, and nothing below it. It's very easy to spot when you're a developer because you can you know from your experience how long things will take to build and how complicated they are. So if you, if you see a company uh, that has been just recently launched and they have like huge, huge, huge plans uh, and absolutely nothing delivered yet, you can pretty much expect it will not go well um, over, over the course uh, of, of a longer time. So yes, pretty much I went to the, the, the blockchain space this way um, I went pretty much one by one um, from from a, like a list of um, sorted by market cap cryptocurrencies, and I looked at block, uh, I looked at Bitcoin, I looked at Ethereum, and I kept going through the list 
until finally I hit the the, the Algorand. And um, with Algorand, the, the first thing that that uh, that I found very interesting is that the supply is limited. So it was the tokenomics um, looked a little bit similar to me, like bitcoins, because bitcoins are also very limited, and because of that, you know, it's the value of scarcity. Uh, Bitcoin continues to rise in value. So even from an investment point of view, it was immediately a good decision. Um, even though the current economics are um, suppressing the price because that's done by design, so the price can be low, everyone can get in, and then finally there is a limited supply, and that's that. It will happen in the in the next years. Uh, so that's pretty much how I got in. Um, the the story. Uh, really quick, which year was that? Try to pinpoint for the audience out there. Oh yeah, it was. Um, it was last year actually. It was uh, early last year. It was March or or April, where I got into the blockchain space. Uh, March I, or April, twenty twenty or twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one actually. I mean, okay. before that, I did follow um, blockchain space, but I wasn't actively investing. So I knew about all the all the different technologies. And I knew about how Bitcoin works, how Ethereum works. I was very interested in and just finding out how this how this is valued so much, right? It's, I think it's uh, it's one of the most common questions that you just have some bits on the computer and somehow it's valued so so much money. So it was interesting uh, to me why even that that happens. Uh, but um, in March 2021, I actually tried actively investing. Just tried to use um, all my knowledge in the space to to actually get myself some gains, and yeah. it actually went very very poorly <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I lost like sixty percent of my funds in the first uh, the first couple of months. Uh, but I do not think that that was a bad thing because I learned a ton of things about the market and about the technologies and uh, how the market behaves. So it was definitely an investment in my knowledge and other than trying to get the gains. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's beautiful. I just want to take a moment here to emphasize that Mr. Greg here, that for all the audience, when someone truly decided to experimenting things and decide to dive into something that, for example, you started really taking it quite serious from investing, experimenting since March 2021. And now a little bit within a year later now you are running this amazing company that's bringing much value that people care and support so much about just want to take a moment for audience who are listening out there to think in that this industry is still so so new and there's still so much opportunities and it all started with one decision and then take the decision and try things out and things will truly unfold beautifully for you, for your friends, for everybody. So uh, I just think that's absolutely incredible. Yeah, really. abs absolutely yeah. agree. Um, I, I think the most, the most difficult step is just trying the first thing because you don't even know where to start, right? That's, that's the most difficult part. Um, but once you get into it, it's, it's very, very simple to just keep going next step after step and just keeps compounding everything you know and everything you, you you are capable of doing it just keeps growing and growing so th so taking that first step is very very important and very very difficult but it's also very worthwhile yes absolutely and earlier we briefly touched base on i think now's the perfect time to uh tell us the story how did tiny charge come about the story behind it <laughs> okay okay um all right so the the beginning you have to go to when Tiny Man was created. Uh, obviously, you can immediately see the the, the similarity between Tiny Chart Tiny Man. Uh, the first version of the site actually was just a bunch of scripts in Python I have written for for myself for my personal use to use in trading in Tiny Man. Uh, obviously, you know to 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 create some software that. Uh, it's worthwhile. You need to be using it. You need to know what the trader expects. So I'm just a trader, like everyone else. I know how uh, how what what you expect to get from the charts, from all the data that you want to have, uh, which parts would be useful to you, which wouldn't. Um, so 
At the very beginning, I just had um, very simple Python scripts. Uh, they were uh, basically just 100 lines of code. It were, they were querying the Tinyman uh, SDK, which is a very good SDK, by the way. Uh, at the very uh, the, the Tinyman AMM, which is an automated market maker, this uh, decentralized DeFi, DeFi market, pretty much. Um, they released with an SDK, which allowed you to query um, all the information that you needed from from the from the pools. Uh, a pool is something you use for trading. So in a pool, you have uh, an amount of asset one, an amount of asset two. Uh, these amounts um, or the ratio of these amounts is what gives you the price. And the AMM works in a way that um, when you buy something, the price goes up, right? Because the ratio goes down, if, if, if you understand me. So uh, the market maker pretty much guarantees that the assets are always tradable by decreasing the amount you, you are getting or uh, increasing them if, if you're selling, right? Um, so yeah, Tinyman released with, these, with this amazing SDK, uh, which allowed to, to, for me to develop my own scripts. And uh, I went ahead and tried um, actually getting some, some profits from this. Um, once again, um, I wouldn't say my, my trading abilities are great, uh, but I did earn a lot in the first few days simply because everyone was just throwing money at, at, uh, at, at the project. So that was uh, one of the things that got me excited for it. And basically, in the, in the first days, you could buy basically anything, and it would go like up in price 20, 30 percent. Uh, I mean, 20, 30 times, not percent. It was like 2,000, 3,000 uh, percent up. It was, it was very crazy in the early days. You could, you could go in with, uh, with 100 algos. You could go, go out with 5,000 algos. It was a very exciting time. Uh, I, I what was this? Try to pinpoint again for the audience. Uh, so this was uh, at the very beginning uh, of, 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 of Tiny Man. I think this is October 20, 20th of October, something, or something like that, 21st yeah. of October. Um, yeah. It was very early days. Not many people knew about it. And everyone that was creating the projects uh, had some idea about the market. So not many scams did exist back then. So if you threw your money at pretty much anything, it would be guaranteed to go in price, which was very, very fun to play around with. But also, uh, there were no charts and no data about any of the pools um, available. Uh, so you couldn't really tell if, if your asset is going up in price or not, because if you forgot the price that was like yesterday, you had no way of knowing if, uh, if, 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 if you are actually yeah. earning or not. Yes. So this was what my issue, and I wanted to solve it. So what I did was create uh, um, this, these Python scripts that were just monitoring the price over and over and over again. Uh, at the very, very beginning, it was just for the assets um, that I was interested in. So um, I will not be naming them, <laughs> but uh, I just had a list of assets I was interested in. And I got into uh, one of the new projects which I found very interesting. The name was Algabain. It, the ticker was for you, uh, and it was a meme coin. It was one of uh, the earliest meme coins that existed in this space, and it was unfortunately one of the earliest scams that existed in this space because we got uh, there was a Telegram channel dedicated to this to this to this coin, and we had fun. I was providing the chart touch the charts to the to the coin uh, at the very uh, beginning everyone kept calling me the charts person the chart guy uh, because I kept like every five minutes I was just posting the chart from my script and that's how it went shortly after I think the same day the this this for you token got rugged because um, Unfortunately, this is what uh, what any creator of an AS ASA can do on on an AMM, they can just pull out the liquidity or just sell all their tokens and they can get all the funds back, right? So it's a very important aspect of investing that you have to know that what you're investing in is actually sound and will not take your all your money. So this is the whole risk with investing in very early things. And yeah. yes, this token did rock pull, uh, as, as you say. So they, he, the creator of the token pretty much sold all his assets and took all the money from everyone else, and everyone was left 
with these uh, worthless tokens for you, which I would really buy because I I I, um, I wish to have at least one one token to to you remember that that beginning. <laughs> uh, you remember roughly how much that um, the creator pulled? Um, I don't think I think it was a very low amount. I think it was like a thousand algos, something like that. Um, the 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 token had really? much more potential, and uh, it, it was yeah. it, it was very impatient from the creator to just you know scam so early. I don't know yeah. why he did that. Yeah. But Thanks to this chat, I met my co-founder, uh, MD, which is a great, great blockchain developer. He was also in this chat. And thanks mm. to this chat as well, there came the idea of creating a website with these charts that I was prov providing. Right? So I had these scripts, and people just wanted to see them all the time instead of me asking me every three minutes about, about the chart. Um, right. So in the same day, I... I I went to to GoDaddy. I purchased that tinychart.org. Uh, immediately, you know, first decision with a project, you go and buy the domain. So, <laughs> yeah. so I immediately and I did that, and I really liked the name because um, Tiny Chart is very memorable. I think it's very nice sounding. Such a good name. Such a good name. Yeah, yes. and has a ring to it. Definitely. Yes, yes, yes. And you can in immediately like tell what what it's about, right? You you go to yeah. see charts there, so. Uh, it's it's very easy to explain as well, and um, you can immediately see the um, the similarity with Tiny Man. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, it was in, in, indeed a site dedicated fully just to Tiny Man. Um, so after I I bought bought the domain, I went ahead and I spent the next forty eight hours, pretty much without sleeping, eating, doing anything. I spent the next forty eight hours just developing absolutely anything needed for the site, so I could release it as soon as possible because I saw huge potential in it. Um, so forty eight hours passed by. I had a working product and I released it on under tinychart.org and I posted it on Reddit. I think the first person, the first place I I posted was there. And yeah. immediately I, I got a, a huge amount of positive feedback. So um, I was very, very stoked about it. Uh, the, the next day I have created uh, the tiny chart token. Uh, I, will come, I will come back to explain what the ASAs exactly are later. Uh, but this is like a mini, mini cryptocurrency that you can use um, in any of your projects, if you're building on Algorand, you can trade this uh, smaller cryptocurrency uh, freely over Algorand. Uh, so nice. we have our own token, and this was from the very beginning designed to uh, to be a utility token, where if you hold um, the token, you get bonus functionalities of the site. This was at, obviously at the very beginning, this was not um, specified which utilities you would be getting because uh, we kept building the site at the very beginning had um, manual additions of um, of assets so I would basically have to sit there and uh, and I had a, an admin for uh, interface and I just had to manually add the asset IDs that I needed to track so everything was okay. very very cumbersome uh, oh, cool. You pretty much had yeah. to had to sit uh, in front of your computer, and if someone asks you for an asset, then you need to add it. Uh, so, yeah. as you can imagine, there um, currently I think there are over four thousand um, trackable assets. So adding them manually ha was definitely not possible. Um, so I after I saw that the popularity was still there. Uh, I spent the next week of building a better version of the site because the first version of the site actually was using still the Tiny Man uh, SDK, um, and it had a lot of flaws, a lot of corner cases that corner cases that I needed to fix. Um, so uh, the, even though, though the first site worked and it was created actually from the project that I've been working on for two years in the past, so the only reason I got to release a product so fast was because I used all the code from a previous product that I have been working on for, for a longer, longer time. And I basically just threw out everything I done, didn't need, and I implemented all the stuff that was missing. 
and in those 48 hours i was able to to release thanks to that um by what the was way, the project I, that you are working on by the way uh, if, we could, if we could yes. share with us a little bit so in my LDA history on, on Twitter, on my profile, um, you can see some of the screenshots, how it looked like. Uh, so it was called Libby, and it was a social media um, project, a project where, um, you know how uh, some people use Instagram for, for sharing their progress, for example, in, in runs or, uh, or anything related to their personal goals. So for example, they post, you know, how fast they run and how much they run or like a book they have read, something like that. People use yeah. that Instagram for that all the time. And I, I thought it would be a great idea to have uh, a dedicated um, social media for this. So you set up your goals and you post the updates on them and it will be a self, uh, self-running self thing where you could motivate yourself just by looking at what other people are doing. And it will be a yeah. whole network of that. So I've been yeah. working uh, for the past two years on that. Uh, but I, um, this was such a close project to me and so, so important to me that, uh, I couldn't finish it. Um, you know, two years went by very, I was very hard working on this, but I created the first version and I didn't like it. So I scrapped all of it and I created the second version. Uh, and I liked it, but it had a couple of flaws. So I scraped it again and I built it for the third time. And the third time was actually really good, but it was not finished yet. And um, uh, I saw the opportunity with with Tiny Chart, so so I decided okay. to take this route and ignore the other projects for now, uh, because I I do believe that um, I w- probably would still be working on it if if yeah. if I didn't go with Tiny Chart because yeah. I just wanted it to be really, really perfect and there was no yeah. time for that in 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 Tiny Chart because you need you needed the project immediately to start trading. Absolutely. Okay, so these are the newbie questions, right? Okay, um, I'm definitely not a coder and not a computer scientist. How does the social media uh, platform that people you could track or see other people's you know progress on some things has something to do with you know the first version of Tiny Charts? You know, like you, you're saying, yeah, please, yeah, <laughs> super curious. So, mm, there are a couple of ways you are building software. Most of the time, when you're starting out with uh, with building a new application, you are using something called a boilerplate, where uh, mm. a lot of the things that are common and used in uh, in other projects they are already implemented. So, for example, uh, you, you have to have a lot of this boilerplate code in order to have all the usual things you see in in your software. So, for example. Um, when you're building an application like Tiny Chart, you need to have an interface, which is what you can actually see in front of you yes. that you can click on. This is the thing that loads in your web browser. This interface needs to communicate with a backend. And a backend is something that holds all your data uh, and needs to be separate in order to, um, to be secure. So only the front end can communicate with the back end. Um, and uh, to do that, you need, you need to have a couple of instances of servers. You need to have a couple of different um, programs, I would say. They are very s- separate things. So you can run one, and it would work all on its own. And you comp- uh, combine all of these things together to have the application. Uh, and the first version of, of the site used um, uh, four different uh, modules, I would say. And so, uh, so there was a module for a database service. How this worked was um, you need to have constant updates of the price, right? You need to constantly know what the latest price is and you need to keep updating it. So the first module was a database. So it was a place to hold all your data. And it was the service that kept asking for the price over and over and over and over again. And it kept writing uh, this data to the database which then could be used by the second module, which is the API. The API is an interface to interact with the database. So you could send a question to this API and it would answer you with with the data that you need, which you can then use in the third module, which is the front end. Uh, So as you can see, it goes from front end to the API, to the database, and back to 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 the front end. 
that that's the traditional way of working uh, with with an application. Um, you do this because it's much easier to work with separate parts, separate modules of the site than trying to put them all together in a huge application. It's much simpler to just divide. Uh, it's actually one of the terms in, in computer science, it's divide and conquer. Uh, so with, if, with any problem that you might have, you just divide it in small, smaller parts. And until you can find a solution to the smallest portion of the, of the problem, and then you go up and up and up and keep combining things. And uh, the fourth module of the site was um, was a module I had to write from the ground up because I had no idea how to do it. Uh, I knew that I needed it, but I had no idea how to do it. I had never done it before. Uh, so it was WebSockets, which which basically is a technology that allows you for allows you to have real time updates for the site. This is kind of complicated because this is not a traditional way of working with websites. Uh, how a website works is you send a question to a server somewhere, and the server responds to you with, a, with, with the website that you're seeing. And that's the traditional model. And this, the real-time updates is not implemented in a traditional model of, uh, of the internet. So what you do with WebSockets is that you have this persistent connection. So um, the, the client from the front end connects to the server and doesn't close the connection. They can keep communicating between, between each other very, very easily. And uh, uh, this comes with a couple of uh, things that you need to implement on your site. Basically, I have to implement the whole other server to keep these connections, to, to work with all the, all the data that, that went from the DB service, and it went... Um, you have basically this first route to load all the past data, which went from front end to the API to the database. So it was the, all the past data that you were loading. And then the database also was sending the latest records through the WebSockets to the front end. So you had the whole, whole suite of, uh, of, of updates. So it was not only the best data, you, you had also had it in real time. And I think that was... Um, the the biggest selling point uh, for for tiny chart because you could immediately instantly see what what your trades do for the price. Uh, the price itself was not correct 100% of the time because we at that point were still using the Tinyman SDK, and I had a couple of issues where um, you couldn't get the exact price. You could only get a quote. So uh, a quote is. Um, you ask for a specific amount of what you want to get. So, for example, I can get a quote for a thousand yearly. How 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 much algo I would get? So, how the first version of the site worked is that I would get the smallest possible amount um, from this asset, and I would ask for the price of this amount, and it would be the closest to the price that I could get. But this was not perfect still because, for example, there are uh, assets that are um, uh, they have only one of the entire supply. So, for example, there's a fraction token, uh, which has one supply, one total supply, and everything else is just after the decimals. So the price for that was actually very, very crazy because uh, it was not possible to buy a one of this token. So, as yeah. you can see, it was a, a ton of quirks on the on on the on the database and uh, on pretty much the whole application side. So. Uh, after a week went by, and um, I, I was pretty much still working at my old job uh, and working on Tiny Chart in my spare time, I really didn't get a lot of sleep that week. I remember uh, I basically went to my job. I worked there for eight hours. I came back. I worked for for you know uh, eight or ten hours again, and I went to sleep and I did it over again for for a whole week. This was very very busy week. I, I think. Um, but it went very, very well. And the second version was much better. And everything this time was uh, very um, reliable, I would say. It was much in a much better state than, than the previous one. Uh, in the very first version, still, I was using the Tinyman SDK because it wasn't easy to find a way uh, to switch to querying the blockchain di directly. It's not very easy because... Um, an AMM, which is tiny minus an AMM, it's an automated market maker, 
um, they have specific ways of calculating their own tradable amounts, especially with Tinyman. Uh, Tinyman has a redeem uh, feature. Yes. So, so if you query just uh, pool amounts, this will not be the true price because you need to deduct these redeem amounts as well. And you have a lot of different quirks that you need to do. So uh, even after we switched to, to querying the indexer from Tinyman SDK, so we were like, um, 100% separate. We were, uh, we were not relying on their architecture anymore. We were only relying on the blockchain. Uh, this was still not 100% true. Only after we found an issue with, um, with one of the assets, actually, it had a huge amount of unredeemed tokens and it was very, very badly affecting the price. Uh, so, so we found an issue there and we fixed it again. Um, that was so really quick. That part you're saying the huge amount of unredeemed tokens, like one person or a group of people, they just didn't redeem their token, right? Yes. And that has impact on the price. Would like is you know it's like not precise. Yes, yes. yes. So this was an issue okay. with our early system because mm -hmm. uh, we were just you know a pool is just a wallet on the Algorand blockchain. Uh, yeah. So a wallet has these amounts of uh, one asset and the second asset. And what we were doing very early is we were just checking this wallet, it, what what the amounts of the assets are in this wallet. Right. And we were we were just dividing these amounts to get the price. Because for example, if you have a thousand yearly and you have a thousand algo, then the price is one one yearly per algo. It's uh, it's just a simple division. Uh, but because a tiny man has this redeem mechanic, uh, these redeem amounts are still in the wallet when uh, when you are creating this calculation. Yes. Uh, so, so what we needed to do, uh, actually it was not very difficult because Tinyman uses something called a local state or global state, I'm, I'm not sure, some kind of state uh, in, in, the, in the wallet, which you can query yeah. which has these specific amounts um, that we could, we could check. But we needed to like, first find this issue because for the majority of, 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 of tokens, as you can imagine, this was not an issue because people redeem them all the time. So this was an issue only with uh, with one token where one of the creators of the token actually I think uh, at the very beginning they had a huge amount available and they didn't redeem like half of it, so it was affecting the price like three hundred forty four or hundred percent. It wow. was a huge difference, so we needed to find out what's wrong. But after that, we 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 found a way and we switched entirely to the Algo Explorer API. So we are using the Algo Explorer indexer. Uh, which is basically just um, a very simple interface to interact with the blockchain itself. So we are yes. not relying on anything else. We are just asking the algorithm blockchain itself how, how the data happens, how it behaves uh, on the blockchain. And thanks to that, we actually have the best source of data because uh, even the tiny man SDK does not allow for this um, quality of data to, to get back. Um, right. And it would be also impossible to get all the all the data and all the pools and all the assets. Uh, I would like to take a quick detour here to to say how difficult it was to track all of the assets and the pools, because in order to do that, as you can imagine, there are thousands of pools. There are like six thousand pools, and there are four thousand assets. Um, Absolutely. And uh, if you were to manually check the price. Uh, or like even automated check 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 the price. Uh, let's say every every second that would kill your server. That would be not possible from a technical technological standpoint. But uh, what we did uh, is we are monitoring every single transaction in every round. So how Algorand works is that it batches the transaction that you are making in a round. One round is four seconds, and in a round there are usually 200, 300 transactions, something like that. Yes. Um, it, it's probably lower, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just exaggerate, exaggerating a bit. Something like that. Well, well, it, it, will, it will probably be right, you know, by, you know, at some point this year, it will match the, the numbers you, you mentioned. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I, I know that Algorand uh, wants to increase their, their transaction speed and their runtime, and I really hope that my architecture can, can handle it. Uh, if it cannot, then I will need to fix it for sure. Uh, but uh, we will just have to see. 
Uh, but the thing is that um, we are not checking every transaction. We are just checking which pools we monitor. And if a transaction went to this specific pool, we update the price in this, in this pool. And this allows us to have a real-time data for every pool because we, we check every single transaction and we know exactly when, to, when, the, when the asset amounts inside the pool has, have changed. Um, so so thanks, to, thanks to this, we are able to, to monitor every single asset and every single pool and have all the data for, for pretty much everything. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it, it's a very robust setup. It took uh, pretty much a couple of weeks to, to get it working. And um, even th getting the, the historical data was very difficult because you needed pretty much to query every round for, uh, for the past um, two months. Uh, so, yeah. so the script itself was running for, for at least four days, I think. It was running continuously four days just checking yeah. the data. And every single transaction over the, the two months, it needed to check if it was to the pool. So it was, yeah. uh, it, it, it happened and it was possible. Uh, I, I used pretty much every imaginable tactic to make it faster, uh, but it still took four days. So <laughs> Wow. Wow. Well, wow, that's in that's incredible. So I think it's a perfect moment since we probably mentioned Tiny Man like ten times within the last like like five minutes. Yeah. Would you? It's like the question had two parts. Would you explain in plain English that what happened with uh, Tiny Man and their hack? And also the second part is uh, maybe from as a developer, as a computer science scientist, explain what happened to them 